Hi, this is Eric Ward, and today we'll be talking about some Bayesian extensions of dynamic factor analysis, or DFA, that we've been developing with the Bayes DFA R package. Um, the link here includes source code for the package in addition to a number of helpful examples and vignettes. So the motivating question behind DFA is that we often have a set of multivariate time series data. Here we have sea surface temperature data from four stations on the west coast of the US. And from these data, we're interested in estimating a common signal or trend. The challenge is that there's variability amongst time series, but there's also um, each of these time series is corrupted by observation error. So in the past, this has been thought of as a multivariate time series problem where um, for each of the latent trends between one and K, we can estimate those trends as latent random walks. Um, in addition to those, those latent trends, we can estimate a loadings matrix Z. And so Z is important because it maps those latent trends to our observed data. That multiplication of Z and X is further corrupted by observation errors, which are uh, multivariate normal with some covariance matrix R. And so R may be a diagonal matrix, in which case each of those observed time series have a unique observation process, or that R may be structured some way so that they're correlated. In the Bayes DFA package, we adopt a number of constraints on some of the parameters, including the Z matrix that have been previously proposed to help with identifiability. So one of the common, uh, um, common constraints is to set the upper diagonal elements of Z to zero, as I've shown here. Um, but in addition, in the Bayesian sense, um, there's some, some priors um, and other constraints that we can think about. The first is that we can optionally constrain the diagonal elements of Z to be positive. Um, and the second is really to, uh, to develop the parameter expanded priors, um, which has been proposed uh, as another way to constrain the parameters. And so um, here we can turn that expansion prior on and off with the expansion prior argument to the fit DFA function. So one of the challenges in working with DFA in a Bayesian sense is that there's this really nasty label switching problem. So um, we can see that label switching occurs if we look at the results from multiple MCMC chains um, that are run in parallel. And so if we were to run this kind of model um, through a you know, conventional diagnostics, it would appear to not converge. But on closer, closer examination here using something like the shiny stand dashboard, we can see that the red, um, the red chain um, on, the, on the bottom is uh, you know, converging on some parameter estimate that's the mirror image of the same parameter estimate that the blue and the green chains are converging on. Um, we can see the same thing with the posterior distribution on the right where the posterior is multimodal because uh, um, the red chain is only exploring that negative region, whereas the blue and the green are exploring, exploring the positive. And so in the Bayes DFA function, we've in implicitly included a function uh, that's called invert chains. And so what this function does is after running a model, we'll find situations like the red chain um, and multiply it by negative one so that all of the chains are converging on the same solution and will pass, um, pass convergence tests. So next I wanted to talk about some of the novel features of the Bayes DFA package. And the first obvious one is instead of modeling the deviations in the process, those latent processes, we as normal, normal deviates, we model them as student T deviates. And so the student T distribution introduces one extra parameter, uh, this nu, which controls the, the flexibility of that distribution or how extreme the tails are. In the Bayes DFA package, we can either fix nu at some known value or we can estimate it as a free parameter. We have two, two example applications here of how to do that. The second novelty is instead of just modeling those latent random walks as random walks, we can model them as autoregressive processes in, by adding this fee parameter. And so each trend in our model gets a separate unique fee and we can turn those on and off with this estimate trend AR argument. So just like with AR processes, we can include moving average processes, which I've added here with the theta sub M um, and each trend here gets its own underlying um, data value. And we can turn those on and off again with the estimate trend MA argument. 
And so last, I wanted to talk about relaxing the assumption that trends are modeled as random walks and instead let them model, be modeled with smooth functions. We've adopted two different ways to do this in the Bayes DFA package. The first is to model them as Gaussian processes. And the second is to model them as smooth splines, specifically B splines. And so these kinds of smooth functions are probably appropriate in situations where data sets have high signal to noise ratios. And so these are just using two different data sets of fisheries catches from the west coast of the United States. But we can see that when we compare the fits of the B spline to the random walk, we get more precise estimates. Um, you can look at the data for, for the, on, the, on the right, uh, the raw data um, for most of these species um, is not super variable year to year. So it seems like the, you know, there is a high signal to noise ratio. Um, and we get, we get more precise um, credible intervals than we do from the random walk model. And so in the Bayes DFA package, we can, um, we can specify that the trend model is, is estimated with B splines by setting the trend model argument to spline. And we can optionally specify the, um, the number of control points or knots. And so more knots um, will result in a function that's more smooth and wiggly uh, compared to a model that has fewer. Similarly, with Gaussian processes, we can, um, we can specify that the trend model is model as a Gaussian process by specifying that trend model argument equals GP. And again, like with the basis splines, we can specify the number of knots, which results in different, um, different levels of kind of wiggliness of that smooth function. So there are a bunch of additional features in the base EFA package that I'm not going to talk about today. We've included functionality for dealing with non-normal data. Um, options for comparing models with predictive performance and cross-validation, using some of the RSTAN features for estimating very large models um, or very large data sets. And um, again, the link to the vignettes and articles is here. And if you have any questions, please shoot me an email and um, I'd happy to be happy to chat with you more. Thank you.